for those who are absolute newbies and and you want a more uh, introduction to python and how python handles data and how we are going to load data into python so we have excellent resources in our amix logics platform so you should definitely check that out before venturing into uh, uh, yeah such um, more specialized workshop so now uh, let's go over this with the help of the collab that we built and uh, you can of course run this and i will explain it to you what each and every line will actually do uh, due to uh, uh, some uh, limitations in the time so we will go over them one by one and in some specific areas i would break down the code and then explain it to you what each and every one of these uh, parameters and these uh, functions and the uh, different ones um, handle the data and yeah so if at the end of today's uh, sessions if you still think you you were still short on uh, getting the basics about how the data has been handled then please check out the um, resources that we mentioned and the link and uh, you should have very good solid understanding after that and then if you come back to this uh, recording or uh, this collab then you will be able to work with this uh, much better so let me also open up my chat box uh, yeah okay that's good yeah, i am on the way so how many of you know how to work with the collab so this is a collab that we are going to share it with you and if you want to run it you can actually uh, <coughs> take a uh, make a copy of this one uh, please change the access level from restricted to viewer so that they can actually see this oh, okay okay now we can see Ah, yes. Yes, okay, great. Thank you very much. Okay, so this is a collab. If uh, if you want to save the changes that you are going to make uh, and uh, for better uh, organization, I think I would suggest you to open this up in <coughs> after signing into Google. Uh, involve uploading it no no there is no uploading of any programs here you just can if you have a google account you can straight away run this start running this right make a copy after going to file you can choose this save a copy in drive so you can do this so that you can save a copy of this collaboratory notebook in your google drive so that you can make changes and then uh, work on the on your version of the same information and same collab that we have prepared for you. so if everybody had made a copy then that will be great and let please let me know quickly in the chat box that if you have made a, if you have made a copy of this and we will go over this quickly okay excellent so let's let's uh, we have some introduction and ilia covered most of them uh, about how what we are going to do and about little bit uh, about the data set also so let's uh, programmatically go over the data set so first we have to load some of the modules and libraries and uh, people who are familiar with python would know that we have uh, uh, very useful modules and libraries like pandas numpy scikit and we we will be using many of these today and uh, so we load these libraries and then we have to mention where to find the data this data link that we are mentioning can be from your local computer if you are running uh, uh, running python in your local computer can be from your local computer or it can be from uh, um, publicly available resources or from uh, yeah, uh, uh, from GitHub or uh, other resources that you can access the data. The main uh, uh, bottleneck is you, you should get clean access to the data. And then comes how to load the data. So once we have established where the data is, so this uh, object or variable points to where the data is. So now we have to load the data. So what does this actually does? Um, <laughs> Before that, uh, I, I just assume that everybody knows how to run with the collab. So if you are new, and if you don't know how to work with the collab, on this area where I'm seeing a green symbol, you should see a connect button, right? Connect, it should tell connect. And please click on the connect so that it will, uh, Google can allocate you some uh, resources. You can use it for executing this Python codes. And after that, you can run all the codes. <laughs> Uh, what repository in collaboration should I use? Just use this one. Uh, you you don't. Uh, I don't think that's a, that's a specific question. Just start using this one. If if it is not letting you use, maybe I think you should set up collab first. I think I don't need it's necessary. It will automatically set it up. Just click yes, 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 and go. And once you have connected, you will you'll find these small uh, um, <clears throat> play button like boxes, which will help you 
execute this uh, box of block of code. It indicate properly with pointer. So after we click connect, what will be the next option to choose? So you can come down, scroll down. So you have text uh, information as we can see here. And yes, this will be applicable to Jupyter. You can download and then load it in the Jupyter notebook also. But the difference is you have to uh, install Python and required libraries and modules in your local computer. For that. So this is a code block, which you can see that you can play or execute a code block, or in another word, you can run the cell, right? And that will actually execute all the commands that is that is uh, that we have entered into this code block. So that is what we are going to do, right? Execute these commands line by line and, and get get an understanding of what these commands, uh, commands are doing to the data and how we are achieving our goal of exploring the data. So first, um, we are trying to understand the patterns in the data through some basic exploratory analysis. So that is what you should do. So uh, I think if that part is clear, so let everybody start uh, executing the first block. If you execute this first block, so you should see this output. Do you see this output? So if you see this output, let's break down this uh, these codes uh, little by little and fi find what we are actually doing. Do you see this? Uh, see this output. So what we have done, we have done uh, loaded some modules. We have pointed to where the data link is, and then we have uh, loaded the data into an object. That object is a data frame. So that is what we have done, and then we displayed first few lines of this data frame. So is, is everybody here? Just just the first block. You can run this by clicking this run cell option. Okay. So what this does is this function pandas or pd dot read dot table, right? Uh, <laughs> you don't have to add any packages, uh, Mitra, I think, yeah. So uh, in this one, first you have to uh, let uh, Python know where is your information, where is your data, where is your file. So that is that is covered by this data link. So we have pointed uh, where the file is. And then we have to describe at least some of the uh, characteristics of the file so that the data can be loaded accurately. So one of the important characteristics are, is um, if the file is organized as column wise and row wise, that's what we are going to use. Uh, why do we want to use that? I think this is going to be an exploratory uh, uh, code introduction to you. So if you can develop on this code, then you can maybe put it up in the Kaggle competition. I think this data is not in, not in any competition right now. So after understanding what you're going to do, uh, you can uh, work on this on your own. Yeah. Okay, let's find. Can uh, Sonalika or somebody share the collab link one more time or save it somewhere where you can retrieve and uh, yeah. Yeah, thank you, Iman. Thank you. I think she got it, yeah. So yes, so what we have to describe the data. So we mentioned that the data is organized by uh, in, in a comma separated version format where each and every column is separated by the character comma. And we also mentioned the first line of the uh, data is a uh, contains header information. Sometimes they won't. Uh, if if it has header information, we need it. We need to be it, that needed to be mentioned, and uh, that's all uh, is necessary. And then this can be uh, saved or stored into an object that is data frame that we have named as df, and uh, we can display the first few lines of the df by using df dot head command. So come down, I'm going to open up another code, which is going to give you, uh, and let me uh, explore a little bit more about the data frame that we just loaded, right? You can open up another code by using this block or using this block here. So let's do that. Uh, <coughs> there are functional differences between, let's stick to what I'm actually telling you. So uh, very specific questions like, uh, what is the difference between two functions and other things can be had later. So there are options like read underscore table and uh, table and read, uh, read underscore CSV uh, have uh, different preferences to their uh, to their default values. Right? That's that's what. And uh, so let's see. Um, here, let's see. In the DF, we can find out how big is our data, right? Using DF shape. So we oh my, we see that it is three hundred and twenty, almost three hundred and twenty thousand records or three hundred and twenty thousand rows, and we have eighteen columns in our, in our data. And uh, what are our columns that also we can find out. <coughs> mm. 
Uh, we get a we get a sneak peek of this, right? Uh, you can scroll all the way to the left, and you get all the columns mentioned here. Sometimes, when you have a lot of columns, in the case of or, uh, working with a um, uh, long, I mean, um, more feature uh, data, then you will not see all of these columns. Then you can type df dot info, right? Info would uh, will actually give you. I'm not so sure if I should. Yeah, here we have it here. So anyway, so info. Hmm will actually tell you what are the columns that we have and what type of data that those columns possess, right? We can see that uh, we have, except for one, two, three, and four of our columns, all the other columns are uh, in the object data type or they contain non-numeric uh, entries in their uh, val values in their, uh, as their entries. And four of those are float or they are um, numeric data with significant values. So that is what, those are the information that we get from uh, this <coughs> info uh, tape, right? Pattern. You have not loaded this file, uh, loaded this cell. Run this, execute this, then the name df would be defined and uh, glory, you should be all set. The data set is also in here. In this first block, if you execute this, then you should be good to go. I hope everybody is here with uh, this display. And then later, if you type DF shape, DF info, you will be here. So hope everybody gotten this DF info, information about your columns. Yes, okay, let's move on. Okay, so what else are we going to do with this one? So we have four of our columns and then we can uh, find out some of the summary or some numerical uh, uh, summary, summarization of the information that we find in the uh, appropriate numerical column. One is BMI and we have physical health, mental health, and then we have sleep time. So a simple DF describe, right? Uh, describe um, option. Uh, if you run this, then you should get some numbers. And, that, and those numbers are properly annotated here. First, it actually counts uh, how many uh, parameter or how many values entries do we have. And then we get the central tendency, mean, and then standard deviation. And we get minimum to maximum and, uh, and uh, our quantile values, the 50 percentile quantile is the median. And yeah, we have our quantile values and um, uh, statistical description or summary of our data. So everybody got this? Is everybody here described? Has everybody gotten to the summary of the data? Let's let's quickly go. So, okay, this is, this is good to uh, check because we have a lot of numbers and a lot of information. But if you want to present or if you want to have a uh, a good visual uh, uh, output, then we can beautify this further, right? Uh, that's what we want to do next. So this is the uh, this is the output that you saw earlier presented today. So what we have done from here to here, we will break down this code, and then uh, in the beginning we'll take it slowly, and then uh, after after a while we will just uh, breeze through. So what we have done here, uh, this is the option, and uh, let's open up another code. So df dot describe tells that, and and then adding a range tells what is the necessary information that I need to consider. I don't want the count, right? We already know that how many, uh, how many uh, different rows that we have from our previous analysis. I don't want the count to be mentioned here. So I'm uh, taking the values only from one, right? Uh, Python's counting always start, uh, your outlay of describe is different because you have not used the bracket. If you use the bracket, your out uh, outlay, uh, output of describe will not be different. Mm. Yeah, so uh, we don't need the count data or we don't, don't need to count the number of rows that we already know. So I'm leaving that out. Python always starts from, Python's ind indices or index always starts from zero. So your, your array number, your uh, matrix uh, counts, everything starts from zero. So now I don't want that. So I'm leaving that, that zero out. So I start from one. So in the mean, I'm uh, transposing the data so that it's a little bit presentable. Um, uh, instead of going through like this, I want uh, my uh, features to be listed in the rows column and then uh, their characteristics on the column. So that's what this one tells. And what do I need to call them, right? We can uh, <coughs> name what do I need to call them by this, right? That's what it is doing and, uh, and then I'm transposing the data. That's what T does, right? T transposes the data. If you just leave it at this point, right? At these specific separate points, you can leave this, right? You can leave it this point. It's going to tell or leave out the counter information and then print out the same. And then uh, you can leave it the, 
like this. And that's going to name them exactly the way that you want, BMI, physical health and mental health. So we just copied the name exactly the same way. But if your uh, co uh, column names are not very appropriate or has num some special character, not special characters, has some numbers and, uh, and, and no capitalization, so this is where you, will, you can use it to uh, rename them. Right? And then we transpose it, and that's good to go. Uh, and then uh, we add some beautification touches, like uh, we can actually style the color cell in a gradient uh, of reds or blues or greens, whatever color that you want to color it from. So this gives you a good uh, range, right? Um, <coughs> for each and every uh, column. So we have the least uh, values that are in uh, occupying least reds and most value occupying the most reds. So we get a um, uh, so we get a good number, or uh, yeah, we get a good comparison, right? Uh, which of this four out of which of these four parameters? What is the use of C map? It's a color map. It's for styling. Color map is a full form of C map, right? It's a map to, uh, yeah, uh, map for different coloring, right? So uh, out of the different comparisons for the means, uh, BMI has the highest mean. Of course, it is expected. And uh, the other parameters are, uh, we can have this here. So we can come down and then, for example, uh, uh, this is an overall uh, summary, right? We have uh, some categorical columns, a lot of categorical columns as well. So why do I call categorical columns? If you go there, you can see then they have they take some specific entries or specific values. Smoking takes yes or no, and um, you know, sex takes male or female. And this is not a categorical column, but uh, yeah. And uh, we go here. A uh, general health takes uh, from somewhere between good, fair, very good. So have, they have some specific set of uh, uh, entries that they are taking, right? So we can take those categorical columns and count the number of entries that we have. For example, in this case, um, how many of them are white and how many of them are African-American and how many of them are from different uh, different race. So we can count that and then make a, uh, um, or calculate the percentage of the uh, counts, right? Uh, uh, and uh, how many of them are male and how, how many of them are female. So we can get a dis distribution of different uh, percentage of categorical uh, columns or categorical features, as we should say, because we are exploring this in the data frame, data science point of view, uh, we have. So that is what we can do here and how to count. So we can use the uh, inbuilt value counts function, which is going to count. For example, let's do that uh, in this count uh, option. So if everybody is here, if everybody is here, I'm going to, I'm going to demonstrate you what it actually does. I'm commenting out the second option, second line. And when I run this, you will get different count for yes and different no, right? Uh, for those who has heart disease, we have, uh, we have about 27,000 of those uh, people who has heart disease and th almost 30, um, 300,000, 290,000 of people, they do not have any heart disease. That's what these value counts do. And then uh, just by getting these numbers, we can actually uh, divide this by the total number of these counts to get their, percent, get their percentage. So that's, a, that's our goal to get percentage wise distribution of each and every one of these uh, categorical column. How do we get that? Uh, we can use both, right? Value dot counts, thus uh, they count each and every individual. So I want you to try in the next code, right? Copy this, quickly copy this and paste it here and go up here. What's an in interesting count that we can find out? Uh, where is this? General health. Somebody can do for general health and somebody else, someone else can do for race and paste your uh, entries in the code uh, here. So um, what do we want you to do? Uh, leave out this part, right? You have to ma maintain the capitalization, right? General health and someone else can do race. Quickly paste the entries in the comment, run for these differently. Right. Uh, if you did not match the uh, capitalization, it will not work. Do we have it here? Great. Excellent. Yes, that's for race. So now you get the hang of it. Anybody did it for general health? <laughs> 